Hey guys, Tisha here, and we're back for another Sister Wise Season 5 review. We begin the episode with Christine preparing to study for the real estate exam. We know that in a previous episode that she took this exam and she failed, but it was only by two points. As she's studying, you hear a lot of noise as well as you see her getting interrupted by her beautiful two-year-old, Truly. I don't understand why no adult would come over at times for her while she was studying. At least if you weren't going to help her with the other children, take Truly. Because Truly being younger, she doesn't quite understand that her mom needs space because she's studying. This is part of where we see that she had to do things on her own despite there being other mothers and a father around. She says that the exam is a few weeks away, but at this point she's only getting able to she's only able to study for like 15 minutes at a time because at some point within 15 minutes she's going to be interrupted. Not everyone needs um, peace and quiet while studying, but it's clear that that's something that Christine would prefer since she keeps mentioning the noise and stuff. She says that she is worried about failing again because it wouldn't just affect like her family, but it would affect the way that she thinks about herself. I was listening to Christine talk and one of the things that I've realized over the years is that Christine put a lot of pressure on herself for things that I really don't feel like she should have. She, she kind of operated from a standpoint where she gave so much of herself at times that I feel like she might have been trying to overcompensate. We know that at one point she talked about how she wasn't working and Janelle was and how her her part that she added to the family was the child care and the teaching aspect. So I can't help but feel like she felt like this was just something else that she could bring to the family. I'm also looking at it like, okay, we know that Janelle passed, but it's so interesting how originally this was supposed to be a family project. Then it turned into it was just supposed to be Cody, her, and Janelle, to now it just being her and Janelle. And if you all knew that this was something that she wanted to do, why weren't you all helping her by like studying with her and doing things of that nature? Uh, Christine says that qualifying for the house was a huge success for her and it did a lot for her and that she just looks at this as another notch under her belt, another thing to be happy about. We then see the family go back to the property so that the kids can see as well as believe that they really are breaking ground on the four homes. Robin let us know that she's sitting there with her kids, preparing to take pictures, thinking that this is where they're going to put their roots down and she's so hopeful. I wanna know when the, the shift came. I wanna know how it went from we're putting our roots down to let's go move to Flagstaff because Dayton is gonna probably be going to college out there and I need to know if that's what we're gonna do as a family. I still believe that that's why they left. Not because of the shooting that happened in Vegas, because let's be clear, shootings happen everywhere, unfortunately. At colleges, at schools, at clubs, in the park, at churches, nowhere is truly safe um, in this day and age. It's sad to think about it, but that was the excuse that they used. Cody points out that he really hopes that this is truly a new leaf for them because they've struggled so much with moving to Vegas that the homes for him feels like it could be a new beginning. He talks about how rough it was for the kids, especially some of the teens, how they didn't wanna be there, how they separated them into different homes, and how you know hard it's been for him adjusting with not being able to see them all the time and being in all these different homes. 
I did not feel bad for Cody in this moment because these were all decisions that Cody made for his household as the leader. I don't care how he struggled. Christine let it be known very early on that she did not agree with the move, that she didn't want to move, that she felt like they were making the wrong choice. So Cody's sitting here and wanting us to feel badly for him because of the decisions that were made and him feeling like, okay, this is going to be a great thing. Okay, good for you, Cody. Um, he says it's a sense of security, seeing the homes being built. The teens are looking forward to living in the nice homes. They let us know this in the confessional. They said they're looking forward to actually being able to have something of their own to be able to decorate their rooms and their walls the way that they want to. And more than anything, being next to each other again. These adults really changed the dynamic of this family by moving the kids away from each other and not allowing them to interact with each other on a normal basis. Mary points out that there's still a lot that needs to be done before they move into these homes. They're looking forward to being in these homes, but they have to remember that they actually have to qualify. We then go to see McKelty, Christine, and Cody meet up with a fashion designer who created a dress out of cellophane um, that you use to create Easter baskets. It was actually kind of cool. Christine thought of this idea because she wanted McKelty to be given the opportunity to be close to seeing what one of her goals, like a day in the life, what would it look like if this is what you did? If if you accomplished this goal that you really wanted to, to do, what would that look like? She wants to encourage her dream as well as let McKelty see like what's under the hood as far as the fashion industry is concerned. And I was like, good for Christine. This is something that, um, any great parent or considerate parent would do because it's real easy to say that you want to do something, but it's different when you see some of the different layers of things. They meet um, the designer and the designer explains the concept of the dress that she created, how they're going to have to do the makeup and the hair, how they're going to take some pictures there as well as at some other locations, how they'll have to fit the model, like all the different nuances that sometimes people don't think about. Because in fashion, when you're showing certain clothing, hair and makeup does matter. I know there's times where I've seen the same outfit on myself and my hair braided versus my hair out gives me a completely different vibe for that outfit. So I understand what the fashion designer was speaking about when they were when she was explaining that stuff to McKelty. The model then comes out with a bra and what looks kind of like um we'll say like a a slip. It's not a slip, but that's that's basically what it looked like, like a I don't know what they call it. The thing that, that's poofy that they put under the dresses when you're a little girl, one of those. She walks out. And as soon as she comes out, Cody walks out because he's like, he can see that this was going, you know, to a place where he didn't need to be in the room. I did appreciate him doing that. I know that the wise point out as a part of their religion that he should not be seeing a woman in the nude but she wasn't completely in the nude. She did have on a bra. So to me, it was like she would be out there at the beach, really. Because, like she would have had on a wrap skirt and a bra. I don't feel like that's a big deal. But to them, it matters. And it was nice to see Cody walk out without having to be told to do so by his wife. He did show respect in that manner. Christine says that Cody did this automatically without having been told to do so because he is a gentleman. Cody says that his children like to harass him about his beliefs when it comes to modesty and his demands, but he's not changing it. McKelty lets us know that even though she doesn't always agree with his beliefs, that she's not mad that he has a certain standard and that they're following what they believe their faith tells them to follow. Overall, we find out that McKelty did not just enjoy it. She loved it. She loved helping the designer out. The trip was an excess, a success and she really wants to go down this route. Sad thing is, if I remember correctly, McKelty didn't even stick with this. She didn't complete pursuing her fashion um, stuff. And I think it was because she got distracted by a boy. What boy? Wasn't it Tony? Let me know down in the comments. I think that's what happened. We then see 
the adults meeting up at Bird's house. They discuss again how the gym was a huge desire for Janelle, but it didn't happen because of the price. We find out that the gym was so much more expensive startup wise than it was for this online business that they could run from anywhere. They discussed how the, the gym was really Janelle's desire, but it didn't happen. I already said that. This is just one instance where Janelle got nothing. She didn't get what she wanted, but Robin did. I still think that Robin was the main reason why they did Sister Wives Closet because Robin was the one who presented them with that Sister Wives bracelet to show them the prototype for the business for Christmas that year. So I feel like this is Robin's baby. As they wait to launch their Sister Wives Closet in the website, the designer of the website can see that there are 73 people waiting for it to go live. They go live and there is almost 300 people on the site, but no one is buying anything. You mean to tell me that at this point, this is season five and they only managed to get 300 people on their website when they launched it with the type of audience that they had to be reaching on TLC at that time? Who dropped the ball? Because there should have definitely been more people on that site for the day of launch, especially given the, the program that they were on. Um, the fact that you only had 300 people up there with you being on television that is seen all over the place, I would have said that this would be the first sign that this might have been a bad idea and this might have been a waste of time. Cody says that no one is ordering and he's noticing that the minutes just keep going by without any orders. Mary said that she expected for them to have people purchasing fast while Cody is talking about how much of an emotional setback this is, but it's also going to be a financial setback. If this idea came from anyone else other than the bird, I do feel like Cody wouldn't be so calm and understanding in that moment. I think he would have been a lot more upset. Mary is reading some of the comments and one of the comments says that everything is insanely expensive. What about the real moms wanting to buy something without having to mortgage their homes? If I remember correctly, the cheapest thing up there might have been 50 something dollars and i know that it went in upwards of 200 dollars. and when i say cheapest i'm talking about like a pendant or something if i recall i tried to go on the website and look at certain things everything is sold out except for this one item but i don't even know if it's still an active website cody talks about how they wanted these pieces to be iconic so they're not cheap they're um silver and silver is not gold and this is coming from somebody who wears a lot of silver so let me let's be clear here but don't act like oh my god it's just the top of the line stuff um they're not cheap but they're ugly that's my opinion they're ugly y'all let me know if you think they're ugly i i thought a lot of the pieces were ugly or look like something that you could get out of a um a quarter machine if they still have the little necklaces and stuff in the quarter or 50 cent machine i'm telling my age uh they did uh 28 orders which as i said seeing as to how they are so well known i would think they would do more i know it i don't know maybe it was an algorithm thing because sometimes i now let's understand before i sit here and go on a little rant i'm newer to youtube so i understand that i'm not going to get the type of views or audience that some other people get but i do feel like even though i don't have all the graphics and the video clips and all the other stuff i do a good job but i do notice sometimes that my numbers may not be quite where i think they're going to be but i'm not known these people are known they're known in 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 the streets of of tlc so i would think that they would have done better with their sales back to christine christine can't help but feel like they're failing as a family because they still aren't close together 
When she was studying, she said she felt like she was by herself and none of the wives took her kids. Mary did not agree with this statement at all, but Christine was right in that moment because her feelings are her feelings and in that moment, they should have been validated. She said that she wanted the ladies to help her raise her kids, but at this point, she feels like she's doing it on her own and sometimes she feels like she's failing. Christine, I think we all have moments as parents where we feel like we may have not done our best job, but in my opinion, the most important thing is to show your children love and to be better to them than even your parents were to you. I hate how she continues to be so hard on herself and I don't know why because Christine just seems like an awesome mom to me and I may be showing a little bit of favoritism because I got a soft spot in my heart, soft spot in my heart for Christine, but I just, I feel like she's a good mom. We see the family waiting at the park for Christine to come to say whether or not she passed the test. And the good news is that she passed it. The family is excited and she's excited because the first thing she says is she can bring money into the home. She talks about how one of the things she looks forward to is selling her first home and bringing the money back to the family and saying, okay, what do we need to do? What debt do we need to eliminate? Now, take in mind, this is the first thing that the wife that Cody says was never about the family says, right? That she was just there for convenience. Cody expects for us to believe that this same woman who just wanted to help eliminate debt, debt that's not even hers because most of that debt will probably be coming from Robin, that that's the first thing that she wants to do with her money. But she wasn't putting the family first. Christine talks about how she feels a void, not only in her life, but in her kids' lives because they are operating as individuals instead of a family. She then looks at them in confessionals and says, I don't have your help. At that moment, not one of them, including Janelle, acknowledges what she's saying. That's the part that I was talking about when I did my um, The Wives rant. And one of the people that I kind of went in on was Janelle. I still like Janelle, but I see sometimes that Janelle didn't speak up for her fellow sister, fellow sister wives. And in this case, I think that I wanted Janelle, if anybody else, to have Christine's back. She said she wanted sister wives more than a husband. That's why she chose the life and that she cannot raise her children for another two years on her own, which lets us know that at this point, it's been two years of them doing things on her own. They are falling apart as a family, as I said earlier. And Mary's answer is that she doesn't feel like they're feeling or falling apart as a family as long as they continue to work. So continuing to work on it was Mary's answer for everything. And it got her nowhere except for on the porch, hopefully, if it ever gets built with uh, Cootie and Little Birdie. She probably won't even be on the porch. She'll probably be sitting down in the gravel pit waiting for them to come outside so she can view them from way across yonder by the, the, the man-made pond that occurs when it rains, hoping to see them come out on the property. Christine says that it's been two years of this that she doesn't reach out and ask for help, but they don't reach out and ask for help either. These women were never close. I don't think that a lot of the closeness formed until they got to Flagstaff, especially with Christine and Janelle. It seems like when that's when their relationship really became a friendship outside of the whole sister wives concept. Um, and I know that um, Mary and... Uh, her favorite person, Robin, weren't really friends. You guys, let me know what your thoughts are. If you haven't got a chance to go and watch my Say What um, Robin edition, because I kind of went in a little bit on some of the foolishness that I've seen Robin do. And there's going to be many, many more parts to it. I already know that. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do so. Got my clicker in my hand. Let's see if it works. Until next time.